So if you look really carefully right right there, that's Vince Vaughn. Right there, Vince Vaughn. All right, I don't know how the audio is going to be on this, but hopefully it's going to be okay. So I'm out back at a Homewood Suites now. Always do a little work back here in the mornings. And you can definitely tell that they irrigate. It's about 8.30 in the morning and it's still soaked out here. So, which that's what you have to do to keep your lawn green when it's, you know, 100 degrees. It's been more mild the last couple days though. So that's why, you know, the grass has got, obviously, the grass has been taken care of, so it's coming back. I think these are like dog pee spots. Dog pee spot. Standing water over there. What's up, y'all? All right, so listen, I am here with my son, Nick. We are at his house that he rents, and he has just been getting into lawn care. Actually, recently, I love it when you send me the pictures of when you're doing your stripes and stuff. So you've been getting into that, right, with your mowing? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. He's been learning how to mow, he's been enjoying that, he's been enjoying the mowing and everything. Even he told me a story one time that you, when you do your stripes, tell me how you go around to avoid messing them up. I go through this gate, uh -huh. and I have to go along the whole border just to get to the shed. Just so you don't mess up your stripes. Yeah. See, so we, we definitely have a lawn care nut here in the making. So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna you know, mess around with this backyard. Why not, right? Let's do some stuff to it. We're gonna do some seeding. I got a new, like, kind of patch seed kind of thing we're gonna try out. And we're gonna measure it and just show kind of beats what it looks like. And if maybe you're a beginner and this is what your lawn looks like, we're gonna show you the first couple steps that you can do. And then also, we're gonna track the progress. Nick will send me pictures. And over the next several weeks and into the winter, we'll show you exactly what the results are just from this, what we're doing just today. So you can understand that lawn care really isn't that difficult. Okay, so here we are. And this is a mostly Kentucky bluegrass last lawn and then there's also a lot of fine fescue in here obviously you'll see this pool is not in use anymore but one of the first things I want to point out is this is a low spot right here where water congregates and so what you'll notice is have you noticed Nick these light green have you noticed that light green that grows up right there see it so what that is is that's called water grass or nut sedge and it's opportunistic anytime that you have standing water it's gonna grow and it's a sedge, it's not a grass. And the way you can tell is, can you see how the, see how the blades are kind of, we'll just feel it. It's kind of sharp. You feel like it's, it's kind of squared off on the edges. It's like thicker too. Thicker, yeah. Compare that to your, you know, Kentucky bluegrass, you can just see it's not, you know, it's way different. So, I think no, the reason why that's all growing is because the uh, liner, when it rains, it gets full of rainwater and then it, pushes the liner down so the landlord comes out with a bucket and takes all the rainwater from on top of the liner and pours it all the way around here and it floods the grass and that's probably why all that's growing and it keeps it, it keeps it wetter than everything else and yes. hence the water grass growing yes very good see and that's so that's a cultural practice that's what we call that it's what culture are you setting for the lawn and the culture he's setting is a culture of wetness and so when you set a culture of wetness like that <laughs> i know it sounds funny but when you set a culture of things to be wet, then, then different opportunistic plants that like a super wet environment are going to come in. In this case, it's nut sedge or water grass. The, the key here is to dry the area up, which you're not gonna be able to do with this pool here, but whenever landlord gets rid of the pool, then this can be revamped. For now, we're not gonna do anything to it, no chemicals. There is a chemical or a product called sedge hammer we could spray here, but we're trying to stick to the basics today. We're not gonna go too crazy with it. So just wanted to point that out. Okay, so now we're gonna look at these brown spots. And here's the thing. We don't really know what it is, but I'm gonna tell you that it's a combination of probably some disease, it's lack of water, because they're not irrigating back here. It's in bright sunlight, right? So it just gets destroyed by the sun, and so you have heat stress in there. Um, and also a little bit of low mowing. So we're gonna correct that right now. But what I'm trying to say is, as many of you will have a lawn that looks like that, and you watch in the fall, we're not gonna put any fungicide down, nothing, just a little fur, and you watch in the fall, that'll be all double dark green again. So the key is, is that it will come back, grass is resilient. So right, so people will go, oh, is this, is this dollar spot? Is this, what is this? Is this brown patch? I mean, who knows, right? The first thing that you do wanna do though is, when you do have brown spots, is just get in and just dig a little bit, especially later in the year, this time, a year you just want to make sure it's not grubs i don't think this is grubs and what you would do is these areas would pull up you pull up like carpet still attached so that's how you know it's not grub worms is that the turf does not pull up it's still attached all right a couple other things we're going to identify here just so you know what they are and some of these weeds back here so you got two that get confused a lot so this one right here this is wild violet 
and you're gonna see that a lot of people will confuse wild violet with this one right here which is creeping charlie they get confused because sometimes both will have purple flowers usually they'll grow together but you can definitely see the difference in the two leaves this is more of a heart shaped here the violet is more of a heart shape and the this is more of a scalloped edges for clover. sure yeah it kind of looks like a little bit of a clover see how the scalloped edges are here you can see the difference here for sure so those two get confused even though the same thing will kill both and it's a product called triclopyr but we're not spraying weeds these this creeping charlie it's pretty interesting you can see if you survey see how all of it's right in here see that it's all towards the back of the property yeah. and that's because it's coming from the neighbors it's coming right through the fence and it's coming over so you know whatever treatments were done here previously has held it back but it'll just keep marching across so that's something we would need to address if we were going to address it we would address that in the fall time but again that's out of our scope today we're just sticking with basics right, throwing it just on the grass yeah and so what that is is that's called learning your land like what are you doing what's going on around you that you might be able to correct it doesn't cost any money you don't have to put any chemicals down you know now it's the landlord so you probably can't correct that but yeah. at least you know you know and knowing is half the battle right mm -hmm. who said that gi joe so i do want to point out in the shade here how beautiful this grass is this is classic Kentucky bluegrass with a little bit of fine fescue in it. It's just soft and cool to the touch. You can just feel it. So, you know, there's a lot of good grass here when it's not burned out in the sun. And that's one of the first things you should look at. When you look at your lawn and you see all of this brown out there and you're in the shade and you don't have any problems, it should just be a pretty obvious clue that, okay, it's just a watering and heat issue. Because as I always tell you guys, cool season turf doesn't like it over 85 and when it gets over 90 it just checks out and that's what it's doing over there it's checking out now it'll come back because temperatures have been more mild now i mean in the low 80s the last couple days and just beautiful a little bit of dappled clouds even now which are going to help with some relief from the sun that will start to come back once we get it some water now the good news is mother nature will provide us some water so we're, we're probably not going to set a sprinkler up or anything and again i'm trying to show you bare bones what can be done just to kind of set yourself up for success in the fall and that's what we're going to be doing today yeah, so see we're on a middle setting. So we probably wanna go, what I would say is, because if I, ch if I take this now to the highest setting, the landlord might not like that. He might be like, wow, it doesn't even look like it's cut. Yeah. Yeah, so we're gonna, we're gonna understand how that works. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up one notch. Okay, so let's take all the wheels up one notch. You don't need to cut it today, but now we just raise the wheel a little bit. We just wanna cut a little bit higher. Now when you get to fall, I want you to take it all the way to the top okay. in the fall. We want to get what we want is, is in the fall the days are shorter right and you don't have as much sunlight so if you let the grass grow taller that's more leaf surface to absorb sunlight right because that's what plants need to do is absorb sunlight yeah so if you let it grow taller there's more leaf surface to absorb more sun during the shorter days so that's kind of how we're going to do that but for right now we took you up one notch that's a good start mm -hmm. 